Hey guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to shoot a quick little video here of my BB6 Honda Prelude. This is a 1997 Honda Prelude that we're looking at. This is a base with a whole bunch of modifications in there. This is H22A, this is an M2B4 transmission. It's on coilovers. They are uh, really nice coilovers that I'm using there. Ground controls with uh, AG, KYB AGX shocks. Uh, I could lower them and raise them as I need to. As you see, the car's a li little bit uh, raised up, and that's because we're going to Duria Hill Climb tomorrow. If you don't know what Duria Hill Climb is, it's a really, really awesome hill climb that I've been looking forward to basically since January 1st. I've been looking forward to the hill climb, and uh, tomorrow is the day. Today, we have to go get the car inspected to, for it to pass inspection and for it to be ready for tomorrow. So what have I done to the car to get it ready and uh, what's different? Well, obviously you can take a look here. The wheels are different and new. So I went ahead and uh, contacted this, one of the racers uh, of the Pennsylvania Hill Climb Association. She used to own a 99 Integra Type R. I believe it was 99 or 98. It was a black one. In any case, it was a DC2 Integra Type R and these wheels were on that Type R. So these wheels were once worn by a Type R and I am gladly putting it on my H22A Honda Prelude very happily because it's wearing Toyo Proxxas T1R tires on there. Really cool. Can't wait to use them. And I don't think I'll be using these wheels and tires for the race. Well, first of all, I can't actually fit them back there. And second, if it rains, and I think it might rain this weekend during the race, if I'm wearing these, I'm just going to go right off the track. Now, if you remember, I was using these wheels and tires. These are the all-season tires I had on there. Uh, many of you remember that video that I posted. They exploded when I hit a rock. Very well done wheels. Those are actually NK wheels. Very good. Unfortunately, uh, that one's dead. But I have three other wheels, two of them are there. And I'll show you one's back there, and I'll show you why in a second. The other thing I did is I replaced the brakes. I bled the brake fluid and a little bit more on that in just a little bit. So taking a look at the trunk here, many of you remember I kind of took everything off because I don't need to have the spare wheel kit in here. Although I do like to carry a spare everywhere I go. So this is one of those NK wheels, the one that exploded. Uh, this is one of them that's left with all season tires on there. Those tires are still good. And I, of course, have a little jack right there, a little quick jack, very lightweight, very portable, perfect to, to, uh, to carry around. These are, of course, my racing sneakers, my shoes, and, of course, I need something to take off those wheels if something goes wrong, so I brought that. And if I need to change my tire pressures, I am ready to go with that as well. Now, the reason I carry a spare tire, it's pretty obvious. I mean, when you're racing, when you're out there, you can hit a rock, especially, you know, in these hill climbs. You can hit a rock, you can hit something, and uh, it'll pop a tire. And if you don't have an extra tire, maybe two, I'm actually thinking about bringing two, just in case. If you don't have something extra to put on the, that, that car, well, you're pretty much SOL. And the hill climb is about two hours away from home, and I don't want to be waiting around for that. So, that's why I did that. So as I had mentioned, I did bleed the brakes. Uh, every time you, do, you go racing, I recommend you bleed your brakes. It's just something you do. Unfortunately, I mean, as you can see, these are the original calipers. So they are, they've seen better days. And the bleed nipple that you usually use to bleed the brakes is completely seized up on these. So what I had to do, I actually had to uh, ask Jane to help me. Uh, she had to pump the brake, and I used the actual brake hose to actually, actually loosen it up. I bled him and I put him back on and uh, they're actually pretty well done now so they're perfect no air bubbles um, so that was a bit of a to-do but we got it done a little bit of a close-up of the ASA wheels that used to be on the Integra Type R but now they're on the Prelude really cool what I also did was I reconfigured my harness kind of tough to see as you can see I also have a pillow there because that seat is entirely uncomfortable I mean I'm going to be driving for two hours each way today, about a four hour drive, and without that pillow back there, I'm going to be demolished. I guess I'm getting old or something. Uh, the reason it's pink, well, it was the pillow laying around, so I just picked it up. <laughs> I also added a few uh, accoutrements there. You see that cell phone holder and a cell phone charger. They were missing from the car before. 
And then of course I also redid my fire, a uh, little fire extinguisher. It was up here. Now the problem is when you're turning really hard, it just slides around since I don't have uh, metal clamps or anything. But I put it there and it is easy to reach from there. I just put my arm back here. I grab that, it comes right out, and if I, ever need, if I ever need it, it's right there, and I don't have to worry about it. Of course, back here is my race suit, and you can see right there, that's a rubber mallet. Now, the reason I have a rubber mallet, well, let me show you. Now, as you can see, this is the front of the prelude. As we get closer here, you'll see it's a bunch of dents right here, right here, right here. And because of that, it kind of gets stuck. So uh, it's kind of difficult to close and open. And unfortunately, the latch itself needs some grease or something. So I have a rubber mallet in case it gets stuck open, because it, it happened to me once already. Got stuck open, I kind of tap it lightly, and it closes up again, I'm good to go. So that's why I have a rubber mallet. Since we're in here, the car is running well. However, there is a pretty massive exhaust leak. It is right there, if you guys can see it. Right there, you can see that. It's a pretty massive exhaust leak. And unfortunately, I just haven't had time to deal with it. I have to take all these off, get a new gasket, put it on there. It shouldn't take that much time, uh, but these bolts look pretty rusted on. <laughs> so it'll take a little bit of time to do that. And honestly, I just haven't had time really to even breathe these days. I've been traveling around like crazy. So unfortunately, we're gonna continue on even with the exhaust leak. I also have not had time to put it on my intake hose. I mean, honestly, I just haven't had time to even breathe, like I said. Um, so I do have the new hose. I'll put it on before the race, so that won't be there like that. So if you see that and you're cringing, don't worry. I will switch it up. It'll be brand new. I have a brand new OEM Honda hose. As you remember, I put a new distributor there. And then, of course, the new radiator, the Mishimoto radiator with the silicone hoses. They are working very well. And uh, this bad boy right here, the H22A from Japan, it's going to do all the work this weekend. And that's all she wrote, wrote, boys and girls. We are all set and ready to go to get this car inspected. It'll pass with flying colors. Nothing's wrong with it. Uh, look out for those videos coming out tomorrow. I may not be able to race Sunday because... I just don't have the time, like I said, but tomorrow is full of racing, so check out my Instagram uh, if you want some real-time, you know, updates, or check out the YouTube channel. I'll be uploading at least one, probably two videos tomorrow, and then I'll put them all together for Sunday and put a nice little racing video together up for you guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.